Yeah, you're all very welcome to the latest LGFA talk show. Uh, we're in the Crow Park Hotel this week, and I'm joined by two very special guests. I've got Katie Heron from Donegal on my left, and Sinead Burke is here from Galway as well. Uh, you're both very welcome, girls. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Uh, we'll kick off with the Serious Support Programme. You two were in Dublin today to launch what is a, a new program uh, in association with ourselves, the LGFA, and the content will be delivered in schools by Youth Sport Trust. But Lidl Serious Support have invested over €125,000. Um, so over to you, Katie, tell us a little bit more. Yeah, um, it's a brilliant initiative that the um, Lidl have invested in. Um, there's 10 mentors um, across Ireland, really, and we have been chosen to go in and deliver and inspire, hopefully, um, young girls in schools across the country. Um, basically, it's to reduce the drop-off rate in sport. Um, there's a lot of statistics out there now about girls dropping out at quite a young age. Um, so it's our job to go out and tell our story of, of how we've got to where we are today through sport and the impact sport has had um, positively on our lives and, and the positive impact you can have on kids so um, we're going to be um, placed in different schools around the country to go in and deliver this program over the coming year and um, so it's it's a massive initiative and great thanks to everyone who's who's put the work in and we're hoping it'll be a massive success yeah brilliant just on on that Sinead obviously the Lidl commissioned a report um, into the drop-off rate that demographic that this uh, this program is going to target um your own thoughts on the program because there is the research has shown that there is a drop-off rate you know from the ages of 11 to 14 so this is obviously targeted towards that yeah i mean it's it's a it's a fragile time in young girls lives so there's a lot going on and especially nowadays with social media and all that thing uh, all that side of things so I think it's great you know for girls like ourselves to come in that they look up to maybe or they see us on tv or they see us on newspapers wearing the jersey just to come in and maybe give them a little boost as and telling our story of how we got to where we are today I think you know if they see more of us and they want to be more like us they're more inclined to you know continue with the sport and you know look up to girls like this so I think it's great we're really looking forward to it we really enjoy the training days and from what we've been shown and taught it most definitely will you know hopefully hold a place for girls that are kind of at a loose end and they're not sure will they keep up the sport we're hoping that it will just you know maybe spark something in their head that oh god I want to be like this person or I want to give it a go and I want to have the experiences that they've had so it, it's great it's really and we're really looking forward to it. And Sinead, what was the, the training that's been involved to, to, first of all, I think you went through an interview process for, for, for to be a mentor, um, but the training then is quite specific and was delivered. It's high quality content from, from Youth Sport. Yeah, Youth Sport Trust spent a lot of time, you know, going through games, going through workshops, going through different a lot of different, you know, areas that we can, you know, bring our stories into life to resonate with the girls, you know, and even just little games that keeps things fun, keeps things fresh. And then of course the Gaelic side of things as well. So it's it's set out so detailed that, you know, it they'll only they will enjoy it so much. Oh, good luck with it. It's, it should be it should be really, really good. Um Sinead, you have some business to attend to over the coming weekend. Yes, we do indeed. And yeah. Just anecdotally, just chatting outside, this this is going to be the first time you've ever played at Crow Park, which when you consider you've been playing since 2006, um, it's a huge day for you. Yeah, uh, we it's it's a huge day. I think we've had a chat amongst the girls in Galway and none of us have actually had the pleasure of playing on the hello ground of Crow Park. So we are looking forward to it. We're trying not to overthink it. It's a venue at the end of the day, but for many of the girls, it's, you know, from a very young age, it's what you, where you want to play and it's where you visualize yourself playing. So it's great to bring those visualiz visualizations and dreams to you know come true so we're really looking forward to it um and i think crow park being set as the scene you know you can can't help but raise your performance on a big stage like that so we are looking forward to it absolutely 29 years of age a lot of football played Sinead you've been around since 2006 um an all-star as well tj Cahar all-star from last year in terms of career highlights to get the chance to play across the road there where will that rank that will rank very high let's hope it'll rank even higher with a uh, with a result so uh, it will rank very high it's, it's something as I said I would have dreamed of from a very young age and you know given the chance for younger girls to play in Crow Park it's brilliant and at, at such a vital time of the year a semi-final with two great semi-finals ahead we are like it, it's great for ladies football it's great for promotion of the game and uh, it's we're just looking really really looking forward to it
so just to let viewers and listeners know it's the TG Cahar All-Ireland semi-final senior next Sunday both at Crow Park and at Crow Park for the first time ever which, which is fantastic um, and Galway are playing Mayo familiar opposition at 2 o'clock um, she said obviously you know plenty about Mayo and they know plenty about you guys uh, a classic draw in Castle Bar and, and you managed to overcome them at, at the Gaelic grounds in the replay Um it's not going to be much in this one, is there? No, there's certainly not. I mean, you know, Mayo know a whole lot about us. We know a whole lot about Mayo as well. We've played them in every <laughs> corner of the country at this stage. So um, it's always a challenge, you know, between Galway and Mayo. It's always a contest. Uh, they've progressively improved throughout the group stages. You know, their performances have got better and better. So we're under no illusions. We know what Mayo will bring. We know they're, as I said, improving every game. So... It's just about us at the end of the day. If we perform on the day and do the things right, um, you know, hopefully it'll all go to plan. And God, we haven't been in a final since uh, since the mid two thousands as well, Shanae. So just it's yeah. near, it's within touching distance again. It is. Uh, we try the whole cliche. Of we try to take it one game at a time. We don't talk about the final. We don't look to, to you know. We've still have sixty minutes of football to play. So it's uh, our main focus is on Mayo. But yeah, it was two thousand and five. I think the last time um, Galway played in Crow Park. So just a few the year before I joined the panel so it is it's huge and we just hope that uh, a lot of Galway the younger girls because it's in Crow Park they might you know get buses up clubs from around the county might come up and and uh, watch us play so we're just hoping that'll be a good day good performance and a good crowd absolutely and we'd, we'd obviously like to see as many people as possible in Crow Park next Sunday Katie on just on, on the semi-finals obviously you were in the semi-finals last year um a step too far on this occasion. Obviously, looking back over Donegal's season, um, retained the Ulster title, which was which was nice. Uh, into the group stages then, and things didn't go quite according to plan for you. No, um, look, we started off the year probably on a massive high uh, yeah. at the start of the at league. Crow Park. At Crow Park, also a first time, um, quite a memorable day. Um, and then we kind of tapered through the league, and we probably ended quite disappointingly against Galway, in fact, in the semi final of the league. And we kind of pulled ourselves together again for the Ulster Championship and we were pretty happy with our performances. Um, we beat Tyrone in the first game and then Cavan took us to the pin of the collar after extra time in the semi-final, um, which gave us a massive um, boost really in camp and everyone was really upbeat and, and ready for the final. And, and we took that game then to Armagh um, and won our third Ulster title in a row and, and things were going great as it seemed. Um, but the group stages. No, I don't even know if, if there's words to explain what happened. Um, obviously ended extremely disappointingly. Um, we felt pretty prepared for both games and I think we probably let the Tyrone game was probably the reason why we're not we're not in a semi final um this weekend and it wasn't even a case of people thought we might have been complacent after meeting them again, but it's it's a dangerous place to be meeting a team twice and they were obviously very up for that game and, and it showed on the day they were the hungrier team and, and we probably let that go and that's probably what cost us. Um Mayo then we had a deficit to make up against them and we had to win by four. Um and it's something that's always in the back of your head during the game. You're watching the scoreboard and you always have a mountain to climb. Um You feel like you're chasing, chasing. Chasing, chasing. all the time and that brings its own pressure. Exactly. Obviously. And you see you might be down by a point, but in your head you need five and, and that's probably something that might have got us um during the game, which is probably could have affected things um but credit to Mayo Mayo came out and and totally dominated and and they they deserve to be in the semi-final um I think credit to them really from where they've come from they've had quite a massive turnaround of players like ourselves and they've dug pretty deep and they've worked really hard to get to where they are so they deserve their day in Crow Park um but obviously for us it was a massive disappointment and something we weren't expecting and um, and no way um overconfident it's just we didn't expect it just came surprisingly to us so we're we were quite upset um it was hard to take being out so early it's been the first time in a long time that we've been out this early in the summer so um uh, listen it's hard to take but that's football and um, what happens in the day can change a lot and um, with all the preparation we had done but um we just we didn't show up in the day and that's something we'll have to learn from going forward so hopefully we'll We'll learn from that and come back at it again next year. Okay, I mean, I suppose it takes a while to digest it first and foremost. Okay? Yeah. So you you won't probably debrief it until you get back together as a collective. I pr I guess after something like that, you might just want to perhaps go and drown your sorrows and then just get the hell away from each other for a little while. Yeah, that? and everyone just kind of fans away. Um, yeah. and you've spent so much time together all year. You've seen you've seen those girls more than you've seen your family, and 
and after a game like that then everyone kind of we spent that night together and then everyone goes back to their own lives kind of and you might see each other now through club football but um it wasn't really talked about much as a group. Um, the WhatsApp has gone sort of quiet. Yeah, enough, pretty it? quiet. <laughs> um, I watched the game back myself um, after, and I'm sure a lot of the girls did. And uh, what What did you take from it? Um, what, what, was it um, handling errors? Was it stuff that you were doing really well early in the year? Wasn't coming off? What were What were the Yeah, I what think were the key pointers that you would have taken from the, from that Mayo game? I think Mayo put a massive press on us on on our kickout, and that was something they'd worked on, and we knew they were very good at that. And um, they'd done it in the league game against us as well, and it was something we had to try and overcome. Um, and that kind of just took hold of us during the game, and we kind of crumbled for a, a period of ten minutes or so. Um, and knocked a lot of girls' confidence, and we kind of we did pick it back up, and and we were kind of driving on, and we just didn't get those lucky breaks. And um, there was a few calls that we thought maybe we should have got. And um, there was a penalty call we thought we might have got, and just things didn't go our way. And they were chipping away at points. We were talking about it after we were. Lo- I looked up the scoreboard one time, and I was like eighteen points. It was like the game had stood still, and we didn't realize it was passing us by. Um, they were just chipping at points and they were building up a quite a significant lead and we couldn't get back into that and I suppose thinking that we needed the goal all the time and we needed those extra points that we probably changed our game plan slightly and were forcing the goal and forcing it and we were we were feeding into their hands they were set up and keeping the goals out and it was easier for them to drop back then so we probably took a lot of the pressure and put it on ourselves which didn't work out to plan um but it's something we're probably going to see a lot of when we go back next year. That game will be played over and over in the video room. But um, listen, you can learn from all these things. And obviously, it's a, so we didn't want to be where we are, but but that's how it goes. And it's something we're going to have to look at and bring it up again because it's the only way we're going to learn. So. Okay. Well, it's very honest. I mean, it's 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 never easy to to pick through the the debris yeah. and the wreckage of a defeat when it's still when it's still pretty raw for you yeah, as well. You yeah. know, because obviously you've got Sinead on your left hand side who's looking forward to. To, to, to running out next Sunday here at Crow Park um, Katie but you've got a, a way from football you're a teacher you're both teachers um, Sinead you're a primary school teacher here in Dublin, here in Dublin. Uh, and Katie where, where are you based your secondary school teacher I'm in Tyrone uh, Strabane okay yeah Holy Cross College so. and you're a mummy I am a mummy. and you're preparing for a new adventure I later am. on this year <laughs> I have a lot going on <laughs> so how the hell are you keeping all those balls in the air uh, yeah it's been it's been quite a busy year Um. I suppose a lot of people were kind of like, do you want to give up one of them? And <laughs> do you know, I went for the athlete mentor job before I knew about the AFL um, and I was really interested in it. And then I had got my 40 week at school and the week later, then I went back to the principal and asked for a career break. And she was kind of like, do you want to reconsider anything? And I was like, no, I'll manage. Um, it is a lot, but listen, I, I'm getting no younger. Um, I probably don't know how many years I've left to play. So it's an opportunity I didn't want to turn down. Um, and again, the athlete mentor thing, um, it sounded really appealing. And I'd love to go out and, and try and make a change in young girls' lives. So it's neither of the two I wanted to give up. And then obviously Joshua's my number one. Um, he comes first. So he'll come on the adventure with me and um, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm hoping he'll love it and my family are going to come over and support me through it. So I have a lot of help around, um, which which helps me manage and juggle everything. Um, people kind of say, you know, you've a lot going on and, and you're doing playing football at the highest level and you've got a child. And when you want something bad enough, like you, you'll make it work. Um, to me, it's no different than what it was. I'm probably more dedicated and more committed now since having Joshua. Um, because it was a dream I had that I thought I lost and I've worked harder now for that and my family have been brilliant and they've really supported me and without them I probably wouldn't be playing to be fair and and, a lot of credit has to go to them but they want me to see through my dreams and and when I have their support I'm I'm going to go for it and if it all falls in the one year it all falls in the one year so we'll fit it all in. You'll manage. I'll manage. manage. (laughs) And what age is Joshua? Joshua's seven. Very good. Seven this summer yeah. God, so he's so. a little chap. He is. He is that indeed. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, Sinead, you're. Um, how the hell do you manage as well? I mean, you're <laughs> up and are you up and down to Galway maybe two or three times a week? Yeah, I guess it's it's great being a teacher that you've your summers off. So I'm 
That does help. Yeah, it does yeah. help. So I'm a, as I say, I'm a professional footballer come summertime. <laughs> so I'm living at home pretty much for for most of the summer when I'm when I'm training. So it's 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 handy. As I said, your family are you know so important with when your preparation and all that. So I think every match day my dad gets up and makes my porridge in the morning. So I don't know how I'd I'd manage <laughs> if it wasn't for that. So it's it, it's great. Yeah, I mean, you guys. Are, are you back soon, Sinead? Um, two weeks time. Two yeah. weeks time. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's, it's gone fast, hasn't it? The it's holidays. It's gone fast. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm actually I don't have the back to school fear at the minute because I'm taking a career break next year. So oh, yes, yes. So that's th- that's because easy. you have another match yes. coming up. <laughs> <laughs> As Katie says, there. everything everything falls <laughs> in the one year. I think. <laughs> yeah. So you're getting married next year. Getting married next year. Yes, in June. Excellent. June. Preparations going well. Preparation's going well. Yeah, I have a great other half that's planning all the wedding. Not. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, it's going well. I'm uh, getting through all the big things, so I'm looking forward to There's it. There's yeah. quite a bit to it, isn't there? There is a bit to it, but I've kind of put it at the back burner now, and it's uh, football focus for the minute. Okay. So I'll maybe touch base with that in a couple of weeks' time, hopefully. <laughs> are, are you a checklist kind of person, or do you just kind of take it as it comes? Uh, a bit of both. I think a checklist is good, so you know what what what's ahead of you, but I'm pretty relaxed as everyone will say you know god you're a bit way too relaxed if you have a wedding next year have you this done have you this done i'm like yeah that'll get done it's mm-hmm. fine i'm i'm very just taking it in my stride i'm not going to panic too much so it'll so happen you know the church you're getting married in yes you know you have the hotel yes you have the band yes and you know the food probably the food the food choices uh, not yet no. okay well no. you've t- you've ticked a few big yeah, boxes ticked there a few, yeah. no i wish you well it's it's a, it's a great time and yeah. i wish every uh, every good much. wish with it um Sinead. but back to football and back to sunday Sinead. um this rivalry i guess look it's it's a natural rivalry it's galway against mayo and you play each other every, practically every year in kind of finals as well um look obviously for, from your point of view your 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 focus is on trying to promote Mayo as best you can because they're a really good side and they're a strong yeah. opposition but all jokes aside Sinead, what will they have learned from you know previous games against you because you have had the upper hand on them but I think the gap has probably closed in a little bit in it recent times closed in. I mean, they're going on some as I said great wins in their group stages their confidence is going up Um it's very easy you know to look back on video analysis to look back on games and hone in on key areas that you know we do the same exact same thing so it's it's very easy to you know to learn from games if you're not learning you know you're you're just going to stay as you are so you have to learn what what areas you can target come in the next day and they're going to have their homework done on us we're going to have their homework done on them so it's going to be very you know as katie said it's very dangerous meeting a team twice and this is going to be our third time meeting this year fourth actually because the league as well so you know there there isn't going to be a lot between us it's just on the day I guess as the cliche goes it's going to be on the day who wants it the most and that that plays to the final whistle I and, guess. and you were in a semi-final last year as well we, we so were, what can you learn from that experience yeah like I mean you have to look back every year and say what are we falling short on? What are we not doing? You know, like Galway, unfortunately, has the tag of, you know, you get to the big day and you underperform or, you know, th- this stigma has been with Galway for uh, the last 10 years, definitely. It, it, in fairness, it's probably true. And, you know, up to now, we haven't been performing at a consist- consistent level. We, maybe we've made it to this stage and then uh, come semi-final days, you know, it just falls short. And now, in fairness, we did stick with, with Dublin last year until very close to the end but it just it just didn't you know we didn't see the game out and that that's what had happened so um it's just one of those things you have to pick yourself up you have to go again you know sport can be cruel but I think the way the the team has lined up this year the way we've progressed the consistency between Tim and Mike and the management uh, the background team it's been flawless and we're now working on three years this is our third year with kind of the similar setup and that speaks volumes for itself so you're not starting fresh come January you're yeah. you're continuing on what you had done the previous year so that that's I think why we, where we are now we're learning and they're learning too they're getting to know what sort of players we are and it's it's I think it's working and hopefully it'll work on Sunday. Uh, Katie, just for the neutral um 
maybe outlook on this game, uh, Galway Mayo. What are your thoughts? Because I, I guess Mayo are this emerging team, whereas Galway have been so you know, as as Sinead says, knocking on the door the last few years. So what what are, what are your what are your views? I'll on need it? to be pretty careful now. <laughs> what I say. <laughs> 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 um, no, we've been discussing it um, a lot today um, about the games at the weekend and. I think with their rivalry, it's going to make for a brilliant match. Um, it's hard to to kind of differentiate between the two teams, but I think going in there, the two provincial games, I've seen both of those games, and I think Galway took a totally different approach the second day and how they set up and, and they kind of nullified the, the threat of the Mayo forward line, which has really been massive this year. Their forward line has been outstanding and, and has got them through many of a game, and I think... Galway done a great job on the second day to nullify that threat and that might be what it comes down to again um, from playing against both teams um, I think the Galway team are super fit this year and they, they have been um, in the last couple of years their running power is, is massive mo- more so from the half back line I think um, which is a massive threat for any team having players come up pace up the field um, and I think that will be massive um, the next day as well um, sometimes Mayo tend to, to push up and a lot of their game as they destroyed us when they pushed up on, on the kick out um, and they have the confidence to do that um, which is very admirable because a lot of teams would, would fear that ball over the top and sit back but they do have the confidence to push up and, and put the pressure on the other team and when it works for them like it did against us they got all the joy and, and it's got them where they are now um, I suppose for Galway's point of view breaking that down if their half back line are breaking that and, and running at the line it's, they're going to make it quite hard defensively um, so it's a very interesting one um, I do, I'm not going to change my mind now from what I've said all day. I do think Galway will take it on the day, um, more so because of experience. And I know we're talking about how they've kind of slipped up on the final hurdle over the last couple of years, but there's a, a day is going to come where, where they get over that hurdle. And I do think um, that's going to be this weekend. And it's obviously going to be hard on both both teams, sports cruel at times, but I do think um, the weekend will be Galway's day. and wish them both (laughs) you'll never know (laughs) i'll never know Uh, i do think it's going to be a brilliant game um but i do think it's going to come down to whichever defense deals with the forward line the best um so from seeing the replay i think um galway did manage with that now and mayo's response to that could be something different and they've dug deep um they've come from from a tough place this year and the bond that they have now within the camp is probably stronger than it's ever been and and that's something very hard to tackle and it's it's probably something very hard to overcome um that team spirit that they have and you see that after the games that they've won how the the bond and the collection of players that they have there they're really they're a really tight group and and they're really working for each other and they're digging deep so that is something that will be tough to overcome, but I'll stick with what I've said today and I'll go Galway. Okay. Um, Sinead, I'm not going to ask you to go in-depth on, on Dublin Cork because obviously you could be pl- you could be playing one of those teams in the final, but just the, the actual um, concept of having two semi-finals in Crow Park and you know, you've got a Connacht Derby, Galway Mayo, and then you've got Cork and Dublin, which is a repeat of, of last year's final and we had a record crowd of 50,000 plus at Crow Park. So... Just to have, and you know, I know you've touched on it earlier, but just to have those two semi-finals across the road, how important is that for yeah. for the promotion of the game, for the profile of the game, um, and for all of those associations? It's huge. I mean, like I said previously, it's where you want to be. It's where you want to be playing. Now, if you could be playing it every week in Crow Park, you'd love it. But I guess these occasions only come around every now and again, and for you know for us to be playing in Crow Park is a huge deal I know Mayo are going to be the same and I definitely think that the other semi-final are going to be well up for it as well it it as I said it boosts your performance you're playing on the surface that you dreamed of from a very young age um and I think supporters are more inclined you know because it is in Crow Park it's not in Longford it's not in Tipperary or wherever they're going to travel they're going to get buses up it's it's the whole experience it's the whole day it's I think it's it's everything and you know I, I feel very privileged that I do get the opportunity to play in Crow Park and you just hope that everything will go to plan and everything the performance will will click together well, you know, you're on a two o'clock in Dublin Cork is at 3.45 so um, look it's kind of a hypothetical question at this stage but will you stay for the second game regardless do you think to to, to watch it or are you the type of person that if you if you lose you just want to get <laughs> the heck out of there um, and hopefully from your point of view that doesn't ex- happen but yeah, no exactly I, I think it'll be a great game so I, I wouldn't see why you wouldn't want to stay and watch it I think even 
you know even if if things don't go our way you'd still want to stay and watch it but yeah who knows it's a hypothetical at this stage but it's going to be a great game I I can't call it I was <laughs> saying to Katie earlier it's one of those games where it could go either way and I know that's very I'm sitting on the fence but it's it's true I, at the minute I'm I'm totally undecided as to what way it'll, it will end up okay Katie what are your thoughts on Dublin Cork um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty similar. I can't I can't call a winner. I think it'll be a cracker of a game. Um, the two teams have been playing outstanding all year. Um, it's very hard to see either of the two teams make mistakes. They do it very rarely. So I think that's going to be massive at the weekend. Um, any slip up at all, and and those two teams are going to smother you for it. So um, it's going to be massive on that part. Um, so there'll need to be a lot of patience and a a lot of confidence, and then in the same sense for both of them. Um, but it's very hard to call. I think the two teams where they're at now, um, Galway have been, or sorry, Cork have been brimming on confidence. They had the defeat to Armagh, and obviously that would have hurt a lot. And a team like Cork wouldn't have wouldn't have taken that lightly and, and they're gonna build on that and have that determination to push on. Um Dublin obviously are, are on form. They have been consistently over the last couple of years and they're obviously brimming with confidence as well, going in as champions. But it's a game that no team is gonna to wanna to lose and for one of them they're not gonna be in the final this year, which is obvious that's gonna be massive for them too, because yeah. it's, it's kind of something that comes second nature to them now that they're in the final every year. So for four out of the last five finals and yeah. now they're in the semi final. So it's exactly. gonna be a tough day for one of them. Yeah. For one of them it's gonna it's, it's gonna come down to it. But um I don't know, I was saying earlier they were all sagging me for not picking a team, but I do think it'll come down to the matchups and the and the full back lines, um and what forward gets ahead of their player um more because Everywhere else around the field is going to be it's going to be player for player, and I'm pretty sure they'll all they can go toe to toe, and both of them have the experience to go toe to toe with each without having playing a sweeper. So I think it's going to be a massive day for the two full back lines, and whoever comes out on top or whoever makes that slip up, it could cost the team massively. Well, it's going to be two cracking matches. I yeah, can't wait. it's going to be a great weekend. Um, tickets, uh, you can get tickets at all usual GA ticket outlets, Centre and Super Value. And you can also give us a shout on the office 01836 info at lgfa.ie is the email. So that's that box ticked as well. Done. <laughs> um, on Saturday, and of particular interest to you, I guess, as well, Katie, we have two Ulster teams in the junior All Ireland semi finals. So we've got Loud are playing against Antrim, and it's Fermanagh and London. Um, Fermanagh and Antrim, I think, have played each other five times this year or yeah, something like that. Yeah, they've met a lot, yeah. yeah. So that familiarity as well. That's. It's but hard. Loud, loud and Antrim is going to be one side of the draw. So you could have a situation where you've got the two and Antrim yeah. back in the final again. But um, any particular thoughts on, on the junior semis? Obviously, um, it would be lovely to get another team up up the ranks exactly. from Ulster. And that's, that's, that's a good way of looking at it. Um, obviously, Ulster is, is quite competitive at the moment, so we're grand with the five teams. Um, we think Ulster is a province that, that has been growing a lot. Um, if you look at the senior championship where we all... We ended up in the group again with an Ulster team and from that perspective it's great to see. It's great to see the talent coming through and the team sticking at it and obviously Monaghan yesterday um, keeping their status and senior as well for another year. Yeah so and just on that they won in pretty convincing fashion probably yeah. a wider margin than I, w- than I would have thought but I guess Monaghan are the type of team when their backs are to the wall they do see Yeah they can, they they come can out pick it up again. Yeah, yeah. Um, they'll attack you. And listen Monaghan are still Monaghan still have the players in their county to be a force to be reckoned with and they have been over the years and I think it's probably just pulling them players together again um, but obviously they did great yesterday and they're back in senior ranks again so having the two teams the potential of those coming through as well is, is massive for Ulster because we would kind of have spoken about um, teams coming out, underage teams coming out of Ulster, and the success really isn't there at the minute. Um, the Ulster teams are are finding it quite tough once they move out of out of their province. So it's probably something that needs to be looked at. So when the senior level is doing well, you'd hope it would urge the younger girls to get out and and develop from from the grassroots up. I suppose. Absolutely, it's a double header on Saturday. We have in Clonus, which is another good yeah. county ground as well. Um, for the two junior semi-finals Loud against Antrim and Fermanagh against London and everybody is trying to get to Crow Park on the 15th of September obviously you'll be there next Sunday um, Sinead just to, you know just to kind of to, to wrap up on uh, on this week's show Sinead just your own busy schedule with the serious support program coming in back to school 
football you're playing club football up here as well yeah, still playing with Ballywood and St Enders yeah, yeah so how do you kind of manage to keep everything I asked uh, Katie yeah. earlier on how she keeps everything on the go yeah I, and, and preparing uh, for a wedding yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, as Katie said it's it's all about if you want re- really want it you're going to make things work and you know obviously some things have got to give you know you've to say no to a couple of things but it's how much you want to be involved in it and football has been a huge part of my life for most of my life um so I would I would hate to close the door on on any any side of, the, of that so it's just about management and what whatever you want to get out of it um this serious support initiative I j- jumped at the opportunity because you know as I said if I was a 14 year old girl and for one of the girls to come in and maybe change my outlook on sport or participation or just life in general there can be so many messages from sport um that you can gain for your life experience but it's it's all about management Um, I love playing football it's a big part of my life so you, you make it work you know I look at the travel now up and down to Dublin it's just second nature I just hop in the car and and get on with it it's not it's not a burden to me as some people call it a s- sacrifice it's it's something I want to do so y- you don't call it a sacrifice at that I, I'm enjoying it I'm lucky that I've been able to play up until now with no injuries and, and things like that. So it's 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 what I enjoy. It's part of my life. It's, you know, you schedule it in every week, every year. So it's it's great. And a part of the 20 by 20 campaign as well as role models as well. Yeah. Sinead, so maybe just to wrap up on this one, who, who would have been your role models when, when you were growing up? Um, I guess the person that probably kept me at it and kept me playing that I looked up to was um, Ni Fahi. She's yes. playing playing over in Liverpool. She went to my secondary school and I played club football with her in Clannan. And she is just a, an amazing athlete. I still look up to her now. She's vice captain for Liverpool, which is huge. Um, and from a very young age, you know, she was 16 playing in that 2004 All-Ireland. And I remember they, them coming as a homecoming back to Clannan and just looking up in, in awe saying oh wow she was a huge role model in my life and I still do look up to her at this stage and what she's done in her career because she's such a professional athlete and a great person to be around you know she kind of just is so modest and is is just someone that you do look up to and um, so she was a huge part of you know my participation in sport and of, of course you've your family members you look up to your dad he was a huge part of why I played and why I picked up a ball he was bringing me down to matches when I could barely walk and throwing a ball in my hand when I <laughs> couldn't even catch a ball so it's it's about your you know your team who you've got around you and the people you know lifting you up rather than bringing you down and that's a huge thing that I, with the serious support and the youth sports trust have told us you know a lot, a lot of girls you know have a lot of a- external factors bringing them down and that's why they don't want to be involved in sports so it's all about the people that are lifting you up and want to see you do well and want to see you uh, perform well and 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 you know I've been lucky th- all throughout my sporting career that I've had a great bunch of you know a support system and they understand the commitment I give and they understand you know that you do have to say no to certain things and you know you do miss out on a, a little parts of life that at the time maybe are oh you know, you're a bit upset that you're missing out on, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's it's a little sacrifice that you have to make for the experiences that that I've had as a intercounty footballer. And you know, you can't buy that. It's just I've made lifelong friends. I've travelled the world with it, and you know, looking back, I've just enjoyed every every minute of it. Brilliant. And for, from your own point of view, Katie, in terms of role models, um, I suppose football wise, growing up, um. I would have looked up a lot to the girls who were playing county at the time when I was coming through underage. Um, and I suppose um, Diane Toner was one of those and Maria Devaney and Debbie Lee and that group of players. Um, Dino, who's actually up in Dublin now, it's a long time, Nadine Doherty. Um, She's been in this chair a few times. Yeah, and Aoife Hegarty, that bunch of girls. And actually three of them were water girls for us this year. And we had so much respect for them growing up um, for all they'd done. And, and they didn't get half of, of what we get now. And they were there just out of sheer passion and, and the amount of years that they gave to their club and county was inspirational. 
inspirational to us as as young girls growing up and we just really looked up to them and everything they'd done and all the successes and failures they had we followed and we aspired to be players like them and having them come back and then to do water for us there over the last couple of years was brilliant and um, having them on the line the support that they gave was was just massive and, and they joked about it but it was it meant so much to us um to have girls like that and the younger girls coming in didn't know who they were and we found it mad like that they were such influential players in Donegal and gave so much to their county that the younger girls didn't know them now there's a big age gap but <laughs> um for me they were they were massive club level county level they were just girls that that you wanted to be like um and i suppose coming up through the ranks then this was in, the, in recent times she's probably the same age isn't he? breach corkery um i just think she's just a total athlete like she's a machine um and she would have been had a lot of to do with where i've got to today um just the way she plays the way she trained everything she'd done I just thought she was such a a role model um and I don't know if I'm older than her or not actually but I was just someone that I watched and was a player I wanted to be like and when I trained I thought of what she was doing when she was training and she was always doing more than me and it was something I used to to try and get myself fitter and be better and I just think she's been an absolutely outstanding athlete um and she's given so much to both camogie and Gaelic football and she's been an inspiration to many girls I'm sure around the around the country um so there's so many there's so many girls and it's it's funny how sometimes you don't pick out the standout players who are scoring all the goals and winning all the awards and for every individual you'll look at somebody playing maybe in the position you play in in the field and you learn kind of more from that and I think with this program um especially the girls playing now at underage level and going through school I don't think they realise the influence football has on them or how positive things can be and the outlook that they can take in life and the skills they learn. And that's a lot of the, the training we're going to do is, is working on values and skills that you learn within sport. And when I started my career as a teacher, um, a lot of the skills that I would have been asked in an interview I only realised after related back to football and that's where I learnt them all. Your communication skills, your leadership, your showing initiative you learn all that on the field and girls probably don't realize that now because they're not looking ahead towards their career and there's so much that sport can give to a young girl in their lives and that's it's something we really hope that that we can inspire girls and show them that the skills we've learned has been through football and the impact it has and has had in our lives and that it can have in theirs and that's why I think the initiative is just brilliant for those girls to have that insight and see that that we're just normal people who came through lives with different problems and challenges and overcame them to get to where we are today and and any girl sitting in front of us in September can do that too so we're really looking forward to it. Brilliant. They're going to take so much from you guys. Well, hopefully. <laughs> you know, you talk about you talk about role models. You're two absolute role models in your own in your own right. And look, you're obviously you're Joshua's hero as well. And he, he sounds like a great little fella. Hopefully, I'll meet him someday. Um, so I wish you well, Katie, with everything. And thanks for taking the time today to talk to us. Um, you've got so much adventures behind you. You've got so many yet to come. Sinead, you've got a massive adventure on Sunday. Um, you've got a hopefully a long life of happiness yourself and your partner from next year. We wish you well with all that, but we'll be in touch long before that anyway, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll see you on Sunday at Crow Park. Um, that is this week's LGFA talk show. My thanks again to Katie Heron from Donegal and Sinead Burke from Galway. Thank you very much for tuning in, and don't forget that this weekend is TG Carr All Ireland Senior Championship semi finals and our junior semi finals on Saturday as well. But at Crow Park on Sunday, Mayo against Galway, Cork against Dublin, two games. Not to be missed. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.